Okay, welcome to another edition of Lion News. Lion News can be found at lionnews00.blogspot.com. Okay, today is Tuesday, January 11th, 2011. What are we going to talk about today? One of my favorite topics, malicious prosecution. Now, what is malicious, malicious prosecution? It's the instigation of unjustifiable or unreasonable civil or criminal litigation. All right. Now, a prime example of malicious prosecution is Boyd Becu. He is the former county attorney for Candyway County. Now, the West Central Tribune just happens to have a video of this guy trying to uh, rewrite history and uh, convince people that he is concerned about the rule of law. Okay. One of the main reasons why this guy got booted out of office is for a malicious prosecution against a guy who is defending his home against in a, a mob of teenagers with weapons. All right. So now listen to Boyd Becky in his little his his swan song as as he's trying to rewrite history, trying to make everyone think that he was such a good guy concerned about the rule of law. You can find it on the West Central Tribune website under videos. And the video is called Boyd Becky, The Rule of Law, December 29th, 2010. And here, here's, here comes the lies, so get your uh, hip waders on. We're doing uh, the e-disclosure. I think we're on the leading edge of everything at this point. I feel good that I'm leaving the office in my, on my own terms. And that has nothing to do with winning or losing an election. It has to do with uh, being able to do what I thought was the right time always have been and remain fully committed to the rule of law. And I think it's uh, a dangerous concept in society for uh, people to budge from the rule of law and say, well, we'll start making exceptions here and exceptions there. You do that, you start to erode the rule of law, and that's the only thing that protects all of us from the kind of anarchy we see in much of the rest of the world. Uh, the rule of law protects all of us. Uh, it's what we have. It's our shield. Okay. Those are all a bunch of lies. He he couldn't care less about the rule of law. The only rule of law Boyd Becky cares about is the rule of Boyd Becky law. That's all Boyd Becky cares about. See, I have been a victim of his malicious prosecution, so I know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. So let's go back to the definition here. And I have to tell you a little story about the the the, prosecu the malicious prosecution which got helped to get him booted out of office. Okay, remember the definition is unjustifiable unjustifiable and unreasonable criminal litigation. All right? After one of the hearings for Scott Wagger Scott Wagger's attorney was giving an interview with the West Central Tribune, a political whore newspaper, and the uh, radio station, which is another political whore operation down there. Okay, And they were interviewing his attorney. And he was describing what he thought of Boyd, Be Boyd Becky's uh, prosecution, uh, the case that he had brought against Scott Wagger. Now, he was using really vague terms, but he was trying to say that it wasn't justified and it was unreasonable. And all of a sudden, I understood what he was saying. And I said, so, and so I asked him a question, and I said, so what you're saying is that the prosecution is malicious. And he looked at me, and he hesitated for a second or two, and then he said, yes. At which point in time, the reporters from the newspaper and the radio station promptly closed their notebooks and stopped the interview. Okay? See, because they weren't going to report the fact that their county attorney was engaging in malicious prosecution. See, the, supposedly the media is supposed to be the fourth pillar of government, it's supposed to be watching out. So these people do not do these things. See, because they put it in the newspaper and on the radio that Boyd Becky was engaged in malicious prosecution, do you think Boyd Becky would be in office very long? No, 
he'd be gone. He'd have to resign. Okay? Which gets back to the story of, <laughs> of Scott Wagger. Okay? The case was dropped. Okay? Because this information was getting out that Boyd Becky was engaging in malicious prosecution. Well, <laughs> Boyd wasn't going to... Boyd had to drop that like a hot potato. All right? See? So that case was dropped just like right now. Okay? Now, the thing is, I was telling Scott Wagger that he should be filing complaints against Boyd Becky because it was malicious prosecution. He was that they're not allowed to engage in that. Well, Scott's Wag, Scott Waggers said his attorney said he couldn't do anything about it. Well, see there there you go. Scott Waggers attorney stabbing Scott Wagger in the back. See? Because there's plenty you can do about it. You can file a complaint with the Lawyer's Professional Responsibility Board, report him to the Attorney General's office, report him to the U.S. Attorney. See? And if nothing else, what you can do is do what I did. Okay? So this little flyer here, seal of disapproval, removal of Christopher Chris D. Carpen and Troy Warburson from office. Okay. Minnesota statute 351.15, removal of elected city or county official. Okay. An elected county official may be removed from office in accordance with the procedures established in sections 3.51 to 1.4 to 3.51 to 2.3. Okay. Here's the statutes right here. It says malfeasance, nonfeasance, and misfeasance are the definitions here. Malfeasance means the willful commission of an unlawful or wrongful act in the performance of public office officials' duty, which is outside the scope of the authority of the public official, which infringes on the rights of any other person, any person or entity. Okay, nonfeasance, which means the willful favor failure to perform a specific act, which is required part of the duties of the public officials. Okay? Malicious prosecution is not part of the job description of a county attorney. Okay? So, was I right? Of course I was right. Was Scott Wagger's attorney right? No, he was not right. He was trying to protect Boyd Becky's ass. He wanted to get Scott Wagger off the hook, but he wasn't going to step on any of the political whore's toes there. All right? See, I have absolutely no problem with that. See, because I was up in Douglas County demanding the removal of of, of Troy Warburson and, and Chris Carpen. Here it is on 12 14 10. This is I'm um, sitting in front of the panel of political whores up there, and here's what we had to say This legal counsel, you are you going to hire a separate legal counsel? We don't. I well, I, I guess it, it, it will be at this point. So. I, do, I see nothing on the agenda that you were even going to be here. No, well, I, the, I the meeting hasn't even started, so no, why would I, I be on the agenda? <laughs> it's, it's, Our agenda is made up by Thursday. Yeah, well, I'm here before the meeting. That's why I'm discussing it now, because I know that I'd never get on the agenda, and would never get on any agenda, period. That's the whole idea. Right. It's the whole idea is to cover this all up. Because like I said, when Simstead got arrested, it was on the front page of the newspaper. See? And then you didn't know how to get rid of him either. But see, I was nice enough to provide you the statute how to get rid of him. See, Minnesota Statute 351.15, removal of elected county official. We're about to open the meeting now, so I'm going to ask you to sit down. Thank you. Mr. Chair, before we begin. Okay, see? So when you tell them what the, what the law is, they don't want to hear it, see? Because... These political whores look out for each other. See, they are looking out for you. You pay their salary, but really who they work for is each other. They work for the people in money and power. All right? See, here it is right here. 351.15, removal of elected county official. See, all um, Scott Wagger's attorney had to do was bring this to the county attorney, or uh, to the county commissioners, demand his removal, and then here it is in uh, 3517. It says all you have to do is get a petition. Start a petition to have him removed. And it has to properly allege facts which, if proven, constitute malfeasance or nonfeasance in the performance of official duties. See, right there. 
See, that's what these people don't want you to know. See, they aren't going to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. See, they, they think that once they're in office, they're guaranteed to be in there from, for, for a two-year, if, say, if they're elected for two years, they figure they're safe for two years. No, 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 no. See, they aren't safe. But they don't want to tell you that because you can get their ass booted out. And they don't want to lose their, their power or their position. See? So, if you, if, you know, these, this fa these facts aren't told to you, you don't have a power over these people. And they're not scared of you. See, why would they be? Because you have no power, you, you can't do anything to them. See, what they're hoping is you get a gun or something like that and you shoot them. See, and then they can say, oh boy, we need to have more laws and, you know, and we need to have, you know, tighter security and blah, 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 blah. See, it makes them look wonderful and looks, you look like a, a crazy person. See, so what you want to do is use their own laws against them and turn the tables on them. See, that's what you want to do. Because they took this country without firing a shot, you can do the same thing. You know, people are stupid making threats. I don't make threats, I make promises. See, that's, that's the detail. I don't get in trouble for making promises. I could get in trouble for making threats. That's why I don't make threats. I make promises. I'll guarantee you if I tell them that I'm going to do something, I'll do it. See, that's why they're scared of me. That's why when I say that I have clear, precise, and unquestionable evidence that they're involved in criminal activity, they know darn well that I have clear, precise, and unquestionable evidence of criminal activity. That's why they're scared of me. Because I do what I say, and I can back up what I say. Those are the details. See, if you're just some lunatic out there making, you know, wild threats, I mean, obviously, they're engaging in malicious, malicious prosecution all the time. I was a victim of malicious prosecution in Candyway County, in Pope County, see? That's the reality of the situation. But see, I'm not going to go out there and, and start uh, waving a gun around or something like that. That's exactly what they want. I had a SWAT team come and hit my place. See? You think I'm going to you know, face down a SWAT team? That's insanity. No. See? What I'll do is I'll take the facts of the malicious prosecution, the malicious arrest, and malicious, malicious imprisonment, and I will totally destroy their career. I will destroy their reputation. See? And I can legitimately do it because I have the facts on my side. See? So do not fall into the trap that these people want you to do. You have to play by your own set of rules. You have to come up with your own strategy. You play your own game. Okay? You do not play their game. They want you to fall into their game plan. No. That's why I keep on winning. Because I play my own game. I have my own set of rules. It's called the Word of God. See, I play by those rules. See, that's the, the rule of law that I go by. See, so that's why I win. That's why I keep kicking these people's asses. That's why I haven't been sued by Belvin Dobert, who was threatening me. That day I was in the, uh, in the, in the uh, Pope County Courthouse, and he's saying I should remove that information from my website. What, what information? Oh, the information that he was engaged in a felony. Okay, covering up a felony. All right? You don't see me being arrested for uh, criminal defamation. They'd certainly love to do that. If I would do the slightest thing wrong, I will guarantee you they would prosecute me. I mean, they maliciously prosecuted me. Why wouldn't they prosecute me if they had the slightest amount of evidence against me to prove that I was doing something wrong? See? So what you need to do is get the facts, stick to the facts, and you will win if you have the proper strategy. Thank you for your time.